Welcome to our series of lecture on the history of the Order of Augustinian Recollects. Now, we're going, I'm going to share with you on the history proper of the birth of the Augustinian Recollection. But before we proceed, let us recapitulate of what we discussed the last time about the reform movements within the Order of St. Augustine called the Observantine Reform. So let us get again a uh, review of what we discussed last time. And these are the following things that I share with you you know, last lecture. First, the reform movements you know, in the other religious orders as well as the Augustinian order existed before the official birth of the Spanish Augustinian recollection in 1588. So the reform movement within the order of St. Augustine and other religious orders were going on even before 1588, the year of the birth of the Augustinian Recollection. And second point that we, we were able to discuss last time, last lecture, was that the Augustinian Recollection was born from the desire of the Augustinian observance in Spain, especially in Castile, no? This group of observant time Augustinians wanted a more rigorous and perfect way of life. That's why you know, the Augustinian order in Spain was enjoying this, we might say, revitalization of reform within the order. And many of these were Augustinian observants. These observ 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 Augustine observants were the one moving the reform within there. It's enjoying its height of reform because remember at that time from the reign of Charles I of Spain, of Spain and King Philip II of Spain, no, Spain itself was enjoying the golden age. Remember, this was the time of the age of St. Therese, Teresa of Avila and St. John of the Cross, the reformers of the Carmelites, no? the Carmelite order. The same thing, it, what is happening in the Augustinian order in Spain. It's enjoying a spiritual renewal and we might say reform. So it is wrong to deduce that the Augustinian recollection was born in order to reform the Augustinian order. That is not the purpose of the Augustinian recollection because the order was already undergoing reform thanks to the Augustinian observantine friars. On the contrary, my dear friends, the Augustinian observants no, in Spain wanted a more austere and perfect way of life. This collective charismatic desire of these Augustinian observants would lead to the birth of the Augustinian Recollection on December 5, 1588. So let us now retrace how the Augustinian Recollection was born. Okay, this is the prelude before the chapter of Toledo, Spain on December 5, 1588. Who was the prior general at that time when this chapter was convened in December of 1588? He was Padre Gregorio Petrochini del Monte El Paro. He was the Augustinian prior general from 1537 to 1612. And uh, we might say uh, he, he was elected in the office on March 18, 1587, and he stayed that office until 1591. Now, before he left for Spain, the Pope at that time was Pope Sixtus V. No? And in 1588 of March, he, this Pope, Sixtus V, granted faculties to the prior general as the official visitator and apostolic emissary of the Pope of the order uh, of the Augustinian order in Spain. That's why on December 2015, we might say 89, no, after the chapter that was held in Spain the next year, no, he was nominated or named cardinal by Pope Sixtus V no, and became the cardinal protector of the Augustinian order. So he was born on, in 1537 and he died in 1612. He was general of the order no, from 1587 to 1591. 
and he became our cardinal in 1589. That's why, when he arrived in Spain on, this, on September 13, 1588, no, he had to have to, to observe this, we might say, courtesy call. No? That's why he arrived on September 13, 1588, and on September 20, no, in that same year, he received an audience from the king of Spain, Philip II, in his, at his royal palace in El Escorial. Now, the king told the general of the Augustinian, Padre Gregorio, that he has to talk with his confessor, Diego de Chavez, a Dominican, to inform him of his royal will, what he wanted no, to be done in the chapter that would be held in Toledo, Spain, in December. So remember, he began this. This general began his visit, his visit, and as the apostolic emissary, in order to check if the reform is being undertaken, undertaken by the Augustinians in Spain, and he would preside over the general chapter of the the provincial chapter of the Augustinians in. Toledo that was scheduled in December of 1588. But before that, as early as September, no, the King of Spain, Philip II, told the general, Padre Gregor, to talk with his no, Dominican confessor, Diego de Chavez, to manifest his royal will. And what would that be? Would that uh, would that royal will be? Okay. So the next day, no. Padre Gregorio met the confessor of King Philip II. He was, of course, Padre Diego de Chavez. And the confessor told Padre Gregorio of the king's will. And what was the king's will? The king wanted, no, in the Augustinian province in Castile and his realms in Spain, that recohelic houses for friars as well as nuns would be, we might say, established. So that was his royal will, the will of King Philip II that the Augustinian, there should be Augustinian recollect houses for men and women to be established in Castile as well as in his kingdom of Spain. So that was his royal will. So the royal will was ex executed and when the chapter of Toledo was convened, this was the royal will was uh, expressed by the prior general. This is the, what King Philip II wanted, and this was approved no, by the chap members of the chapter of Toledo that was uh, on December 5, 1588. No? That's why this was the official date of the birth of the Augustinian Recollection, which was the manifestation no, in abeyance to the command of Philip II. That's why the experimentation of this way of life, the Augustinian Recollect way of life, was held in the monastery founded before by Alonso de Oroso in Talavera de la Reina in Castile, Spain. So this will be, the, we might say, the cradle. And that the provincial, we might say, council mandated Fray Luis de Leon, another Augustinian, and Professor scholar at the University of Salamanca to draft the first Augustinian Recollect constitution called the Way of Life in Spanish, the Forma de Vivir. So what are these, we might say, Forma de Vivir, no? That was uh, approved in 1589, no? The spirit is still present in the present constitutions of the Order of Augustinian Recollects. First, it delineates no, the idea of recollection, which included the spirit and exercise of prayer, penitence, and continuous conversion, which is manifested in the external works, even the external organization of the order. So this is the spirit of the Forma de Bibir, still enforced in our present constitution. Then the value of peace and harmony among the brothers, no, a certain sign that the Holy Spirit lives among them. Third point, the effective and affective poverty, both individual and community, should be observed by the friars of the recollection. Then, number four, the dignity should be given 
to divine worship. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the mark of an Agustinian recollect. No? Special attention is given to the celebration of the liturgy, especially the Holy Mass. Number five, the appreciation and of penitence as an indispensable requirement for a life of prayer. That's why the penitence, that the penitential practices of the friar and the physical ascetical practice like flagellation, wearing of hair shirt, would, we might say, help the friar discipline himself and help him pray better. Then, attention and special care of the sick is given in this primitive constitution of the forma de vivir. The seventh point, no? It encourages the intellectual and spiritual formation of the religious, especially in preparing candidates for the priesthood. And these points, no, which it's still valid today. We are still we are still observing these points in our present constitution. But it was first we might say lived in the monastery in Talavera de Leres Monastery in 1589. It was inaugurated on. The 19th of October, 1589, and the convent consists of eight religious, no, Augustinian observants who embrace the recollect way of life, led by Francisco no, Briones and Jose de, Farad, de Parada. No? Their life was poor, austere, and totally directed towards God. In other words, it is they're leading a contemplative way of life. That's why in 1589, no, the monastic life of the early, or we, we might say the primitive recollects, was directed towards contemplation and asceticism. And it helps maintain fidelity to the common life. These were years of complete adhesion without doubts no, or vacillation. And as a consequence, they struggled to incorporate the charism in their daily lives. That's why 1588 and 1589, these are crucial years that develop the identity, the contemplative, ascetic, and communitarian way of life of the early recollects. They should thought of themselves as members of a contemplative community and with demanding ascetic tendencies as they include these ideas no, in their program of daily life. No? As much as possible, they avoid going out of the monastery. So everything was organized around prayer and the demands which prevailed over all other occupations. That is in Spain and Colombia, as well as some houses no? in our missions in the Philippines. So how did they live the early recollects? No? The hour of the community mass was attended by all. And there were two hours of mental prayer or meditation. And it were and they were immutable as well as the celebration of the liturgy of the hours. So these were rigorous, no? And if they wanted to have a we might say an austere way of life and we might say solitude, there are there were hermitages outside of the monastery which they could observe the or intensify the spirit of recollection. Okay, so these were the early life of prayer of the early record as stipulated by the early constitution called the way of life or in Spanish called the forma de vivir. So prayer is one of the key central roots of the forma de vivir. Its author, Fray Luis de Leon, is convinced that it is the best nourishment of charity and is quick in proclaiming it so from the beginning just as our target is the love of God. So this was the end point of the quorum, the love of God, and also express in the light as we clearly express it, no? It is, we might say, it elevates it into worship, especially in the divine praises of the celebration of the Holy Mass and the divine lit liturgy of the hours, and the use of the sacraments and the exercise of meditation and prayer. Thus, it is very clear that the way of life of the early recollects in Spain was contemplative way of life. Okay, 
So that is the thing that we have to be, we might say, aware of. The early recollects were no, contemplatives. No. So between 1590 and 1600, no, the recollection was spreading in Spain. So what were the early houses no, following the form of the Bivir that were established between 1590 and 1600? No? Of course, we know the cradle of the Augustine recollection, Talavera, 1589. Other houses were established within Castile, first in Portillo in 1590 and Nava del Rey. These are, we might say, located in the region of what we call the province of Valladolid. Then in Madrid in 1594 and El Toboso in Toledo, Spain. So this, we might say, five houses including Talavera were the first early houses of the recollection. That's why, no? These monasteries became, uh, would later on be organized no, into a province in order to intensify their recollect observance no, as stipulated by the Forma de Bibel. That's why on February 11, 1602, the papal bull, no, the Pope at that time, Clement VIII, organized these five houses into one province. So they could elect their own prior provincial, but they are still subject to the Augustinian prior general in Spain. The same organization that was, we might say, being observed no, by the observantine Augustinians. So this, this is different. These are recollect houses with their own recollect provincial, but subject to the authority under subject uh, to uh, subject under the authority of the Augustinian friar general in Rome. No, then later on in 1621, June 5, no, with the papal bull Militantis Ecclesia, the Augustinian recollection was elevated into a congregation by Pope Gregory the 15th, still subject to the prior general of the Augustinians in Rome. So the vicar general, which is the highest authority, no, in the recollection, in the co congregation of the Augustinian recollects, his curia, his seat was in Madrid, no, that, that was founded in Madrid, no, and it became the seat of the vicar, of the vicar general of the Augustinian recollects. And this is the official seal of the Augustinian recollection until 1912. No? Now, what were the development in order to, we might say, in order to identify our charism, the following books were, were uh, we might say, were, we might say, published. First is the Constitution of 1637, an expand, the Forma de Vivir does not respond to the congregation anymore, the needs of the congregation. It has to be detailed. So it was expanded in 1637. Then in order to record the developments and the charism of the congregation, the Historia General was, was first published, its first volume was first published in 1663, the first volume, to identify how the charism was lived by the early recollects, even in the Philippine missions. Okay, let's proceed. Oh, not only that, the ceremonial of the order of the congregation before it became an order was already about how the recollects no, celebrated its lit liturgy, no, its own peculiar liturgy, in, which, which, which was published in 1697. And this would continue when we became an order in 1912, the ceremonial. No? Now, this is the, we might say, the organizational structure of the province of the congregation since the, as a congregation no, the papal we might say bull gave the prior provincial the right to subdivide the houses according to provinces no religious provinces geographically located no they were of course no the province of saint augustine located in castile spain the province of Our Lady of the Pillar, located in Aragon, northeastern part of Spain. The province of Blessed, at that time, Blessed Thomas of Villanova was in the southern part of in Andalusia. And of course, the missionary province 
in the Philippines dedicated to St. Nicholas of Tolentine. Later on, the Augustinian We Might Say Reform movement in Colombia would join the Recollects and they would become, would become the province of La Candelaria, Our Lady of La Candelaria. So at that time, between 1621 and 1835, there were five provinces. Three in Spain, one in the Philippines, and one in Colombia. Okay. So the habits would be different because we belong to a reform movement, no? Shorter capucha, and of course, modified, we might say, cincture. Okay. Let us now go to the development within the order. Now, this development typifies the, 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 the charism of the observantine movement was also present in um, um, in the in colombia among the agustinians in colombia it became independent development but it has the same spirit with the recollection in spain so that's why at the beginning of the 17th century imitating the spanish recollection another reform movement sprang up among the agustinians in colombia that's why in 1604 the provincial council of the province of our lady of grace in Colombia, assigned the monastery of El Desierto de la Candelaria to the promoters of the Augustinian reform and gave them the norms of life essentially the same as those written by Fray Luis de Leon. So who were these promoters of this reform uh, of the Augustinian Colombians? They were Fray Vicente Maliol and Fray Mateo Delgado. They were the pro promoters of this reform and the monastery of La Candelaria was given to these reformers. No? That's why in 1616, the recollects in Colombia were or had, who already possessed monasteries in Panama and Cartagena adopted the form of the vivir of the Spanish recollection. Then in 1629, they were incorporated to the Congregation of the Augustine Recollects, and in 1629, they were incorporated further with all the rights and privileges. And in 1666, they became the fifth province of the congregation. So the Spanish, we might say, reform is always connected with the Colombian reform, having the same spirit, but geographically separated. Thus, the Colombian recollection became a part of the Spanish recollection in our history. Okay, so when once we were able to de delineate this contemplative aspect of the Augustinian with my way of life, now let us go to the transformation of the congregation, especially in Spain and in Colombia. Because between the 1800s and 1890s, there would be crisis that would challenge the church and the religious orders at that time, no. And what were these problems, no? There were. It was the period of revolutions, no. Remember the French Revolution, its spirit of 1780, uh, we might say 1789, no, were carried out, no, and it was uh, exported by Napoleon Bonaparte throughout Europe. That's why it created a disturbance within the status quo of the monarchy. That's why it gave, we might say, a problem, a political problem within a strong-minded monarchy at that time, especially the, the monarchy in Spain. Okay. By the 19th century, another problem that Spain had to face was the loss of their Latin American possessions. They declared its independence from Spain in 1821. And the only colonies le left under Spain were the Philippines, Cuba, and Puerto Rico. Okay. And there were dangers, of course, at that time when the liberal governments, which was under the Freemasonry, began take to take over the government and stage a persecution, anti-church persecution within Spain and Colombia. That's why the we might say these profound changes no especially in the governance of spain created problems within the order as well as the church no it stripped of the recollects of their monasteries created obstacle for their common way of life and transformed them into an apostolic and missionary community 
because of their missions, they were spared from total extinction. That's why the Augustinian recollection at that time had to adapt to the signs of the times. That's why for the for more than a century, the missions and the ministerial apostles have been their almost exclusive occupations. That's why no, the Augustinian recollects in Europe did their best to survive amid political turmoil in the 18th and 19th century. Similar in the Philippines, the recollects were doing their best to maintain their missions since they were dependent on personnel coming from Spain. However, in Spain, the political situation began to change from bad to worse. In 1835, the liberal and anti-clerical elements got the upper hand in the government in Spain and began the persecution of the Catholic Church. That's why the Minister of Finance, Juan Álvarez Mendizábal, issued, we may say, laws that were that targeted the religious orders especially the contemplative religious orders that is the we call it in spite this amortization the suppression of houses the confiscation of houses not belonging to the religious orders and they were sold no in a, in a very low price to the highest to the prospective buyers at a low price at that time because the government needed money and they confiscated these properties and sold them to prospective buyers. So in order to recoup, no, to improve the economy of a bankrupt, we might say, government. And the recollects, no, at that time lost almost 33 houses in Spain. They were confiscated by government except, no, for the monastery, the recollect monastery in Monteagudo, Navarra, Spain. It was spared from confiscation. Why? Because there was a clause in the decree of no, Juan Alvarez Pendizabal, except for those religious orders who have missions in the Philippines, they could only maintain one monastery. And the monastery that we were allowed to maintain was the Augustinian Recollect, we might say novitiate, no, of in in the visit located in Montegudo, Navarra, Spain. Thanks to the thanks to the missions in the Philippines, the recollection in Spain no, was saved from total extinction. The monastery of the recollects in Montegudo is still the novitiate no, of the province of San Nicolas. It's still functioning today as an international novitiate of the order. That's why this exemption shows, shows that though the Catholic Church is, is, was under persecution in Spain, the liberal government understood that only the Spanish missionaries would be able to maintain their remaining colonies, that is, the Philippines, Cuba, and Puerto Rico, and the loyalty of the natives to the mother country. Thus, applying the anti-clerical laws in their, in their colonies would be detrimental to Spain, if she would maintain her remaining colonies at that time. That's why they saw these friars, the Augustinians, the Franciscans, the Dominicans, and the Recollects, no? as we might say, means of maintaining their remaining colonies. That's why each of them were able to save their novitiate in order to form and prepare missionaries to visit, especially to the Philippines. By 1837, the Agustin Recollect province of San Nicolas de Tolentino in the Philippines and the province of Nuestra Señor de Calendelaria in Colombia during these years no, of the 19th century, within the 19th century and the Congregations Novitiate in Montego de Spain and the Fire of San Ildefonso in Rome, Italy, were the remaining communities of the congregation. However, in 1861, the congregation was in danger of losing Candelaria province when the liberals took power in Colombia and began legislating anti-clerical laws in the country. But thanks to the uh, strong province of San Nicolas, they were able to save the Candelaria province in the year 1885. That's why the only strong province at that time uh, was the province of San Nicolas de Tolentino in the Philippines, which was left intact and it had the personnel and the economy to help no, the restoration of the Agustinian recollection in Spain 
and in Colombia. That's why the anti-clerical legislation in Spain later in Colombia prevented the Agustinian records to live their contemplative and common life. As a result, the unfavorable situation transformed them into an apostolic and missionary congregation in order for the recollection to survive. They have to adjust their charism as a missionary and apostolic congregation. From then on, the missions and the ministerial apostolate have been the exclusive activity of the Augustinian Recollects. So what was the status, general, the state of the, of the congregation in 1908, no? when everything was uh, going to normalcy, when are going into normalcy? So in 1829 was the last general chapter held before the 1835 persecution. No? The anti-clerical laws in Spain prevented the Augustine records to hold the general chapter since the liberal governments suppressed three of their provinces in Spain and the priors were dispersed. Okay? As I said before, two provinces no, remained under the congregation. In the Philippines, the province of San Nicolas de Tolentino, and in Candelaria, the province of Nuestra Señora de la Candelaria. Virtually for some time, the Augustinian records were leaderless. To save the congregation, the apostolic commissary was named no, by the Vatican, no, ad nutum sancte sedis. No? And four Augustinian records at that time led the congregation as apostolic commissaries in order that the remaining provinces and their house community in Rome would move on and wait for the proper time to have a general chapter. That's why the Apostolic Commissaries led the recovery of the congregation. In Spain, two more monasteries were acquired for the foundation of future recollects, namely Marsilla, again in Navarra, in 1865, and the Monastery of San Milian de la Cogolla in La Rijo, which was acquired in 1878. The dying province of La Candelaria in Colombia was revived when a batch of Spanish Agustinian records led by St. Ezequiel Moreno arrived in 1888 and reinforced the shrinking Colombian recollects. By the 1890s, all was faring well in the congregation's recovery and there were around 330 Agustinian recollects throughout the world working only in the mission field of the congregation that is in the Philippines. However, the San Nicolas province no, also suffered no, persecution during the Philippine Revolution. And because of this crisis, they had to look um, forward, no, to look for other mission fields in order to survive. That's why thanks to the Philippine Revolution, the recollects were able to get out of the Philippines and expanded their mission horizon in Latin America. One group went to Venezuela and the other group went to Brazil. That's why the Philippine Revolution became, we might say, we might say the catalyst of expanding the missionary horizon of the recollects, no? not only in the Philippines, but also outside of the Philippines, especially in Venezuela and Brazil or Brazil in South America. That's why since 1898, there were around 590 Augustinian recollects around the world working in different capacities. But the congregation needed the direction of their raison d'etre, the their, 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 their reason of their existence. What is now their status in the church? According to our Rome-based historian, Father Angel Martinez Cuesta, the order's foremost historian gave the reason on why the general chapter of eight of 1908 was convoked with urgency. He said, the general chapter of 1908 gathered in the convent of San Milian de la Cogolla is like a stop in the journey allowing the recollects to view the horizon and chart their direction with surer criteria. It was a serious first attempt to give stability and order to what was so far been achieved and to give juridical sanction to an emerging way of life, directing it in the normal legal, administrative, and charismatic channel. That's why the general chapter that was convoked in the Monastery of San Milan de Lecagolia in 1908 redefined 
the charism or adapted the charism of the Agustin to the signs of the times. That's why it was held from July 16 to July 26 of 1908. 21 Agustin recollects met in this monastery and it was presided by the Papal Mununcio at that time, Monsignor Antonio Vico. That's why the general chapter accomplished the following 28 determinations touching the different aspects of the life of the Agustin recollection were made. A vicar general was elected in the person of Reverend Father Fray Enrique Perez de la Sagrada Familia, along with four counselors, and affirmation that the present aim of the congregation is the pastoral life in all its manifestations. That's why, what is this, we might say, manifestation of the pastoral life? No? that defined the Augustinian recollect charism. First, the congregation is both contemplative and apostolic. Second aim of the 1908 general chapter is the formation of the religious. Then third, opening their doors more to foreign missions. The fourth, opening their doors to formal education. And the fifth agendum of the 1908 general chapter was preparing the congregation to become a full autonomous religious order. That's why no, these concerns no, of the 1908 general chapter gave full direction, juridical direction to the Augustinian recollection no, in the 20th century. That's why this, we might say, general chapter, no, rediscovered the true charism of the Augustinian recollection because after 1835, the Augustinian recollection was in danger of losing its contemplative and communitarian characters in favor of activism manifested in pastoral ministry. Finally, by hindsight, the 1908 general chapter prepared the Augustinian recollection to have to, to face the challenges no, of the 20th century without losing its true identity. The six-year period after the chapter saw the decisive overcoming of the crisis that the recollection faced in the 19th century. During this, those six years of applying the determination of the 1908 general chapter, the Augustinian recollects reap the fruits that the Capitular Fathers had sown in San Miguel de la Cogolla in 1908. And one of these fruits was the elevation of the Augustinian Recollect Congregation to an autonomous religious order on September, 16, September 16, 1912. No? That's why on September 16, 1912, Pope Pius X in his papal letter, Religiosas Familias, officially gave, granted the Augustinian Recollection the full autonomy of a, relig of an re of a religious order. And because of this, we might say, accomplishment, the church acknowledged that the Augustinian recollection had to contribute, no, uh, had contributions, no, given to the mother church, and it will continue to do so as, an, as a religious order when it was elevated by Pope Pius X on September 16, 1912. Thus, thanks to the pioneers, Thanks to the apostolic commissaries during the period of crisis, the recollection was kept alive, especially by the province of San Nicolas de Torrentino in the Philippines. The next, the next part of our lecture will be the arrival of the recollection, Agustin recollection in the Philippines and the birth of the missionary province of San Nicolas de Tolentino.